All right, so let's talk about how sexism and poverty are obstacles to equity in schools. Um, first, we're going to talk a little bit about sexism. Um, so because sexism has thought to be dead in recent years, a lot of people think like, oh, women have have conquered sexism. Um, this idea of new sexism or gender bias has been born in recent years. Um, so some examples of how sexism is not dead. Um, number one, women make less money than men for the same work across the board. Number two, there are few female CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. Um, women are typically found in people-oriented or surface-oriented jobs. Uh, and then there's this idea of a glass ceiling. It's this invisible barrier uh, for women and people of color. They, they hit the barrier and they're not able to advance um, in their careers. Um, some social obstacles. Women, when they, women are assertive, they're thought of as bitches, whereas when men are assertive, they're thought of as go-getters. Uh, and then despite things like Title IX, which was passed in 1972, um, which said that there should be equal access to finances for men and women, federally funded um, finances or grants, that kind of thing, scholarships, um, despite that, women earn $50 million less than men for athletic scholarships, and women are underrepresented in college athletics. Um, then there's this idea of individualism that a lot of people hold. It's this belief that inequalities are due to deficiencies in women and people of color rather than societal issues. So to summarize, how are all of these things, how is sexism an obstacle to equity in schools? Um, in my opinion, girls are, are given these messages from day one. They are told that they should keep their opinions to themselves. They are told that they should pursue non-rigorous courses. They are told that they should focus their schooling on people-oriented or service-oriented fields. They are told that their contributions to athletics are not as important as boys' contributions. They are told that they will never make as much as men, so why put in the effort? All of these things are not explicit messages, but because they are interwoven into our society, they receive these messages and it affects how they perform in school. So let's talk about poverty. Um, the development of poverty in the United States. Federal policies led to an increase of the underclass. Um, we have had two recessions in recent years that have led to an increase in poverty. The living wage is not a reality for a lot of people. And this is a big major point. Economic well-being and class slash ethnic background go hand in hand. Um, and there are 50 million children today living in poverty. We watched two videos, one from um, a woman named Candace Sumner and one from a man named Jonathan Kozel. Now, Candace Sumner talked about the disparity between rich white schools and um, inner city schools. She talked about that these uh, inner city schools had no access to resources, that they did not receive an equitable education or an equal education, um, that schools remain segregated despite things like Brown versus Board education. And then she gave um, examples or suggestions of how we could help individually. Jonathan Kozel talked a lot about the same things. He talked about how schools are still segregated, that the United States is running an apartheid education system, um, that schools are separate and unequal to this day. And then he also talked about that ethnic background and economic disparities um, result in the same thing. Students of color are segregated and they don't receive an equitable education. So to summarize, how is poverty an obstacle to equity in the classroom? Um, first, the higher your income, the better your resources, and so the better your education. They just, they go hand in hand. Um, tracking. Tracking is used, um, as we know, students of color and poverty, they go hand in hand, and so um, students of color are tracked. They are put into less rigorous courses. And so this is an example of how it affects their education. Um, lower teacher expectations lead to lower performance. Um, and then access to education is directly proportionate to access to college. Because of all of these things, because students um, of color and students living in poverty do not have access to resources, um, to an equitable education, all of this, they do not have the same access to college, to future jobs, and to their futures. So. Those are the major obstacles um, to equity in education due to sexism and poverty.